Um, as you might have seen, I'm going to talk about sugarcane. Um, sugarcane is a set of mappings that uses the same data as parchment. So it uses the parchment data, but it removes the p prefix on uh, forge. So if you are not using forge, uh, you're probably not that familiar with um, that prefix and why that is uh, anyway. But I um, think that even if you're not using forge and not planning to use forge, you can get some value out of this talk as I am going to cover transformations on source code that keep it compilable. Um, in this case, in a very specific example, but I guess it could also be taken further to a step where you have a tool that automatically updates mod source code for a new Minecraft version and reduce the effort of porting. So, that for the start now, um, how do I use this thing? Oh, yeah. Um, Um, seems to work. Uh, to have everyone on the same page, I'll briefly answer the question um, what actually are mappings? I guess most of you will know, but maybe someone is here who just needs a little bit of refreshment. Um, as we see here, the game as distributed by Mojang is uh, obfuscated and code looks like this a.b is equal to c.ab, which is not readable and also not compilable if you decompile that code because like fields can uh, conflict with class names and the java compiler can't determine if you meant a field or a class so it will just fail um, and that's why we need mappings mappings are like basically a big lookup table that map these unreadable names to something more meaningful and yeah we have a lot of different types of mappings for different purposes. Here are three um, of them that are relevant for sugarcane. First, we have uh, the SRG mappings, which is short for Serge Retrograde. Um, it is a stable mapping, just like intermediary on fabric. Uh, so it, that means it keeps the same name for an element between different versions of Minecraft. It also is a unique mapping, which is very important um, for us. That means every field, method, or parameter gets a name that is unique across the whole Minecraft code base. But the names are still not meaningful and not useful for actually writing mods. So that's why we need some more mappings. In our case, those are the official mappings, which are also called Moj map. Um, these are the actual names that Mojang, Mojang uses to develop Minecraft Java Edition. And since Minecraft version 1.14, I think they distribute them so modders can use them. However, there's a catch. The official mappings only include classes, fields, and methods, and are missing parameters in Javadoc. To solve this, there is the parchment project, which adds parameters in Javadocs on top of MojMap to get uh, like mappings for everything. And those are mapped out by the community. Everyone can contribute there. Um, now, it looks like parchment is everything you need, right? But if we actually start using parchment on Forge, we notice a few inconveniences, which is uh, first that every perimeter is prefixed with a P, like we have here P level and P state. We'll get into why that is in a minute, but um, we can notice that the p prefix is pretty annoying because parameters are actually looked at very often, especially in code completion, contrary to local variables that you only see if you jump to the definition, uh, but those don't have a p prefix, so the other way around could be better. Um, and another point you will notice when using Parchment and Forge is that Lambda parameters keep their SRG names and are not mapped at all. So that sets up our goals for sugarcane, which are two, there are two of them. One is remove the p prefix, at least where it is possible, and the other one is get parameter mappings for lambda parameters. 
So now in order to understand uh, how sugarcane works, we need to look at why the P prefix is there in the first place. And that all boils down onto the way Minecraft Forge uses, uh, sets up um, their game and uh, applies its changes. So what we have here is a graph that describes this process. Uh, you should note that it is simplified and uh, skips over some steps that are not relevant here. Um, but yeah, uh, in the first step, the server and client jar are merged together to get one single jar with the code for both, um, which is then further processed. In the second step, the um, obfuscated names we saw earlier are remapped to SRG, which uh, makes the code actually compilable, which is why step after is the decompile step where the ForgeFlow decompiler will create source code from the game. Then comes the patch step, which adds the Forge changes to the Minecraft code, like firing events and such. And then in the final step, the code is recompiled again to um, have bytecode patched by Forge. Now this process, as it is here, as I just described, it doesn't include any mappings with parameters, but uh, we want them to be in the source code, so we need to inject the perimeter data somewhere in here. The first thing you'll notice is the green part here. This is the part in the process where we are working on source code, and as we want mapped source code, we need to do it somewhere in that part. And the other thing you'll notice is um, that here we have the patch step, which applies patch files to the code, so which means it relies on the fact that the code that exists before it is always the same. So adding something in before would change the code and the patches would fail to apply. That's why it can't be done there and has to be at this point that we see here. Now, um, what, we, uh, what, you sh what is going to be important later is that, um, as I noted earlier, um, SRG is a unique mapping, so every name exists only once. And uh, Forge uses that to in this step between patch and recompile, um, which it makes uh, patching, uh, mapping the source code much easier because Forge can just do a regular expression replacement replacing all the SRG main names with map names. Now let's uh, look at an example. Here we have a method um, that is from uh, fishinghook.java. And uh, you can see that method has uh, no parameter names at the moment and uses the SRG name. Um, so now, um, the parchment, that one parameter we see here has a name in parchment, which is entity. So if we now try to rename that, well, well, I'll do it here. So now if we rename that parameter to entity, you'll see that uh, we have a compile error because the parameter is now named entity and the local variable inside the method as well. This is uh, invalid. Uh, to solve this problem, Parchment uses a very simple approach, which is like adding a P to every parameter. That's where it comes from. Um, Sugarcane uh, will do the same in uh, those cases where it does produce a compile error, but in most cases it will just work without. So. Um, Sugarcan needs to detect uh, somehow detect how uh, where we can uh, leave off the p and where we need to add it. So now we're getting into how that stuff actually works. Um, first of all, uh, building sugarcane needs. Uh, the patched source code and bytecode with the official names, but no parchment data available. Uh, those can just be generated by Forge Gradle. The same process that happens um, when you set up a development environment on your own mod. And uh, 
But instead of using the source code to look at it, uh, Sugarcane will use it um, and pro uh, process it further. Um, and then there's the source transform tool, which is the actual tool responsible for building the Sugarcane mappings. And uh, there are multiple steps, which we're going to look at now. Um, the first step is the um, inheritance map, which is extracted from the bytecode. Uh, it's a very it's a large text file, and originally it does contain the class hierarchy uh, of every Minecraft class to um, object. Um, but later on, for different things that I wanted to do with it, it um, got more data. But that's why it is called inheritance map, which is not no no longer really describes what it is. Um, but yeah. Um, most important for sugarcane are the uh, lambda mappings. We'll also get into what they are uh, at a later point. But uh, yeah, you can just take that inheritance map as an auxiliary file that is needed for the uh, later steps. Um, so now. Uh, we have the step two, which is actually processing the source code. Um, for this, uh, Sugarcane uses the uh, Eclipse Java development tools, um, which can parse Java source code into an abstract syntax tree. Um, and then Sugarcane will visit the whole AST of all of Minecraft, Minecraft's classes and um, take every method and look at what Names are used as local variables or field access without a this. Um, and then every method will get a parameter renamer. We have uh, three types of them. There's always, which is um, just always renaming the parameters, just like Parchment does. It's mainly used as a fallback uh, if Sugarcane fails to find a parameter renamer, but there is a method reference in the Parchment data. Then there's keep, which will never rename any parameters. Uh, sounds odd at first, but it is uh, useful for lambda parameters inside uh, field initializers where you have no method that encloses them. And then there's default, which is the uh, most frequent one. Uh, default comes with a list of names that are not allowed for parameters. And then it is going to uh, rename only those parameters that are on that list. Again, we can look at an example here. Um, here we have a, a um, method. This is taken from the render system class. And um, you will see here at the bottom, you'll see which uh, parameter renamer Sugarcane uses for this uh, method. And uh, you can see those four values which uh, end up here. The first one is the SRG parameter. Um, this one is uh, required for multi parameter methods. Suppose you have a method with two parameters and rename the first parameter to the same name as the second, this would fail, so this name is not allowed. Then we also have the local variable name matrix 4f here, which um, is due to the, the thing that we saw before, where it conflicted with a local variable. Also here we have a static field called texture matrix that is accessed without um, any prefix, so naming the perimeter texture matrix would shadow the field, and that field access would go to the perimeter instead. And we have the class matrix for f. If we renamed the parameter to this uppercase matrix for f, it would also fail because um, the declaration of the type of the local variable um, would then reference a parameter and Java would complain. So in the final step, um, Sugarcane will take the parchment data and um, then process it. It's so it goes over every parameter mapping, takes the parameter renamer uh, for the method that parameter is used in, and then uh, changes the name if uh, required. Here we can see an excerpt. Uh, we have the um, raw data on the left, and then we have the sugarcane data on the right. And you can see that the potion parameter was renamed to p potion because it would because it would uh, conflict otherwise. Now, yeah. Um, that is the basic idea, how it works, but it's not that easy. Um, source code is complicated, and 
in a Minecraft environment where you work on decompiled code that has been remapped twice, it makes stuff only worse. So, of course, we have some special cases that need some special attention in order for sugarcane to actually work. The first case I want to cover is uh, SRG uniqueness. Um, so now remember when I said uh, that SRG names are unique across the whole code base. Um, this is only partially true because if you have um, forge patches, they can um, duplicate the uh, SRG names. So in the vanilla code, every SRG name is only used once, but uh, here we have an excerpt from forge. It's uh, from the advancement builder class. And the top method is the vanilla method with uh, those two parameters and their SRG names, and uh, forge patches in the bottom method here, which adds a third parameter and is uh, patched in by forge. But you'll notice that the um, first two parameters share the same SRG names. Now, um, the parchment data only knows about the first method here, so it uh, just won't cover the second one. And uh, now if we try to rename the parameters as uh, Parchment, the parchment data says, we'll get this. As you can see, uh, it works in the first method and needs no uh, p prefix there. There's no compile error. But now, um, because the uh, source code is remapped for, via a regular expression, as I said before, it has also renamed the parameters of the, the second method. And now we have two parameters named context, which is obviously a compile error. So we need to um, do something against this. Um, but uh, the solution here is uh, pretty easy. Sugarcane will just check for every um, parameter having being an uh, SRG parameter, and then it will merge the renamers of methods that have common SRG parameters. So the renamer of either of those methods will make parameters that work with both of them. And uh, that's why Sugarcane will then actually add a P prefix to the second parameter here, and also in the top method, and uh, thus can prevent the compile error. Now, uh, there is another problem, which is uh, the local classes or anonymous classes as well. Um, because in those classes, they can declare fields or inherit fields from a superclass. And then if you reference a name inside uh, the class, it will try to find a field first before a parameter from the outer method. And this way, a field name can shadow a parameter name. And it's then impossible to reference the parameter at all. Um, we have an example here um, with uh, two or uh, three classes, if you count the local one. Um, and you can see that the local class extends the message printer which uh, in turn has a field named message. And there's also a parameter named message on the make print method. And the bold uh, method me message here that is uh, printed actually refers to the field of the message printer class. And it's not possible to reference the parameter from that point. Um, to solve this, uh, Sugarcane will check whenever when a parameter is used inside a local class and in that case, it will uh, also add a P to every parameter that is used inside a local class to um, prevent those kinds of uh, errors. Actually, uh, Parchment does validation on their data before they publish it. That is supposed to catch this, but it just currently doesn't work, so Sugarcane has to do it. Um, and then we have um, our second goal, and by far the most complicated special case, which are lambdas. Um, the key problem with lambdas is that they are defined on bytecode names. And um, so to understand that, we have to look at how lambdas actually work in the bytecode. So um, suppose we have a class uh, with three lambdas that you can see at the top. And um, then we run those cl this class to the Java compiler. Then we'll get a um, class file with uh, two methods. 
named lambda dollar static dollar one and lambda dollar is valid dollar zero. Um, where static and is valid are the um, methods in which those lambdas were used. Um, and those methods actually contain the code that you can find inside the lambdas. Um, and uh, if parchment maps a lambda parameter, it adds it as a mapping to those implementation methods that are generated by the compiler. Now, what we can also see here is that um, we have no one-to-one -one relationship between lambdas and the implementation methods, because uh, the last two lambdas are actually doing the same thing, and so they share the same implementation method. Um, makes class files, files smaller if you have a lot of, sim, uh, of, of the same lambdas, um, but makes Sugarcane's life harder. Um, So now when uh, processing the source code, Sugarcane um, on, uh, only sees the source code versions of the lambdas and it's uh, not possible for Sugarcane to um, find these relationships between lambdas and implementation methods on its own. But what Sugarcane can do, um, it's, as I said, uh, Sugarcane uses the um, Eclipse Java development tools and uh, they come with a compiler, the Eclipse Java compiler. And that compiler generates um, internal Lambda IDs that you can get with a bit of reflection. Um, and they, this way, the compiler um, assigns the same ID to, idea, yeah, ID to, the, um, to Lambdas with the same implementation, who would share an implementation method in the bytecode. And um, now here comes uh, the um, inheritance map, because the inheritance map uh, contains mappings from those internal Lambda IDs of the Eclipse Java compiler to actual implementation method. And um, this way, Sugarcane can map the actual Lambdas to the implementation method. Well, it mostly can, but again, forge patches make things worse. Like, uh, imagine forge patched a new Lambda into the source code at the very beginning. Now, um, You will uh, note uh, the um, ideas given by the Eclipse Java compiler also use a uh, running index, and so they are all off by one now. So uh, when Sugarcane tries to resolve the um, lambdas to the implementation methods and Forge added a lambda somewhere, it can some. So uh, to prevent this, um, as you can see in those uh, names of the implementation methods between the two dollar signs, um, it has the uh, name of the method where the lambda originated from, uh, and Sugarcane uses that um, to check whether a relationship can actually be valid. So, like here, if uh, that uh, it, if this lambda, the o.forge method lambda, resolves to lambda dot is valid dot zero, but is not used inside a method named is valid, um, Sugarcane will uh, drop that lambda and not process it any further, prevent those kinds of issues. That check isn't perfect, but it is good enough to not, at least it hasn't caused troubles yet. And um, well, if it does in the future, maybe there will be a better system, whatever. So uh, now that we have a relation between lambdas and implementation methods, renaming the lambda parameters actually gets pretty easy. Um, because uh, whenever Sugarcane finds an implementation method in the parchment data, it can just uh, look at which lambdas use that implementation method and then take all the methods that contain those lambdas and merge their parameter renamers together and then use that parameter renamer on the lambda parameters to also map them and uh, only add a p if required. Um, yeah, that's a little bit wrong on the slide. I looked that up and uh, actually a conflict in Lambda parameters get a P and are not discarded. Um, yeah, so before we getting to an end, I should probably also tell you a little bit about how you can actually use Sugarcane. Um, Sugarcane is built 
uh, for every parchment release, but uh, we do not build sugarcane for snapshots or night leaves because uh, it takes a while and um, yeah uh, uses disk space and such. Um, but yeah, uh, you get a sugarcane version for every parchment release. Um, and you can use it uh, using the mod Gradle, uh, Gradle plugin, which uh, adds a mapping channel named sugarcane that can be used the exact same way as the parchment channel, but will load the sugarcane mappings. Um, yeah, uh, for more information or, or a de more detailed um, description on how to use sugarcane, you can uh, visit moddingx.org slash sugarcane. Uh, they will also find a written version of what I just told you if you want to re read something. Um, otherwise, if you're trying to use Sugarcane or you're stuck or you have idea for improvements, um, here's a Discord uh, where you can get help or talk about Sugarcane. And yeah, that's it. I got a question while I was talking. Um, So we have, um, uh, when a parameter conflicts with a variable, why not name it uh, like entity one and entity two? Um, the P, P feels like it, um, well, yeah, no, I can't read that. Um, I'm not sure what exactly uh, you mean. Um, if you mean uh, renaming the perimeter, entity one or entity two, that uh, could be done, but uh, yeah. Um, Sugarcane just uses a P. It would not be much effort to change it to um, any other kind of uh, parameter sanitization. Um, but yeah, uh, if you meant uh, renaming the local variable to uh, entity one and two and keep the name on the parameter, that's uh, not possible because uh, the decompiler chooses the names of the local variables before um, the toolchain actually knows about the parameter mappings. So they are set in stone once. Uh, the parameters are mapped. Are there any more questions? Yeah, uh, modding X, I've um, seen that in uh, chat. Uh, yeah, it's um, basically me and Melan, who's uh, in the um, audience there. Um, yeah, and besides uh, Sugarcane, uh, we also ha we have a lot of uh, tools, mainly tools uh, for making modders' lives easier. There's like uh, also HackDev, which got an overhaul uh, lately. It allows you to make um, mod packs with Gradle and then build uh, the CurseForge, Mobrinth, MultiMC, and like server pack from the same source uh, and stuff like that, um, maybe. And if there are no more questions, I guess that's it. Um, yeah.